is a three foot by 10 foot long rabbit tracker. I'm gonna show you how I built this. This is an absolute terrific rabbit tractor where you guys can feed your rabbits for free. I'm gonna show you step by step how I built this. I'm even gonna tell you how much I spent and I'll give you a parts list in the description. More details are on our feed course. If you stick with us to the end and I'll even share more information how to use the rabbit tractor. Here we go. We're gonna start by cutting four 24 inch pieces from the eight foot two by fours. We're gonna lay them down right by the 10 foot pieces. Now we're gonna just put a couple three inch screws into the 10 foot boards to start building our sides. We're then gonna cut seven 36 inch pieces from the eight foot boards and we're gonna start connecting it. We're gonna make sure the two by fours are on the inside of the long 10 foot boards. We're going to use three inch screws for this entire build. You can use two and a half inch, but I just like the longer screws. Next, we're going to attach the 10 foot boards. And when we're done with that, we'll attach the three foot pieces on the top. We're going to put a couple screws in each side. And then we're going to get started on the top. We're going to cut 45 degrees on the end of the 10 foot boards and then we'll cut our three foot pieces the same way and then we're going to toenail it all together that's when you just sink a screw at the very tip of the board these boards I didn't have to pilot any of these screws no splitting I just make my way around and toenail a couple screws. We're going to have so much cage wire and corrugated plastic on it, it's going to stick together really well. We're going to sink the last 36 inch 2x4 into the end. This will make everything fit correctly. Then we're going to get started on our upright supports. These are 13 and a half inch pieces cut at 45 degrees on each side. There you can see 13 and a half. So we're just going to put a couple of screws on the top and then we're gonna sink one going down into the frame and this will keep everything sturdy so once we're done with this we're gonna cut two two by threes at 29 inches and we're gonna use this really cool pocket hole jig tool I'll link this down in the description this makes it so we can frame in these pieces flush with the top so we connect the cage wire and the corrugated plastic. This will help us with our snowy winters. Another option is just toenailing these boards into the frame. So this tractor is three foot wide. We're using three foot tall cage wire. This is two inch by four inch, 14 gauge cage wire. We bought a 50 foot roll and we just roll it over the top and cut it off with our angle grinder. I did end up cutting it again because remember the door starts one two by four over. So now the top of the tractor is done. Now we're gonna roll the cage wire on the bottom of the tractor. We're gonna put in half inch staples all the way around and then we're gonna cut it off with the angle grinder. We're just using a cutting wheel and then when we're done with that, we're gonna actually reinforce it with our crown stapler. So those half inch staples go in really easy when you're using an air compressor. It makes it really fast. So we put in a bunch of three quarter inch crown staples to reinforce it. So it's 26 inches from the closest edge of that two by four, 26 inches over. So we cut two 24 inch boards. And at this point we're not using treated lumber anymore. We want to make it light. Treated lumber can be up to 50% heavier. So we're going to use two by threes. So these side pieces are 31 inches long and they're nine inches off the ground. You can see that the back is cut at 45 degrees. And then we put the back piece on, which is 36 inches, and the front is 33. So laying your half inch by one inch cage wire right over the top, you can see where you need to cut out. You can mark it with a permanent marker so it's easy to cut out. After cutting, we made our way around with half inch staples. 
We cut another board at 33 inches for a bottom support because we're going to staple in some cage wire. We just happen to have some one inch by one inch laying around so we cut a piece and put in some half inch staples. This prevents the rabbits from getting under the cage. Next we attach a 33 inch 2x3 on the top for a header and then we'll screw in this 15 inch 2x3 for the entrance. We're going to put up some corrugated plastic and we're going to use specific screws that are made for corrugated plastic. I'll be sure to link all this stuff down in the description below. Just click see more. We're ready to wrap the sides. We're going to sink in a couple screws just so it'll hold tight while we wrap around the tractor. Now we're going to go around the tractor and we're going to staple the top first and then we'll turn the whole thing on its side and we'll start stapling the bottom of the frame. cutting it off and then we'll actually make our way around the top cutting all the way around with our angle grinder and then remove it. This is when we're going to turn the tractor on its side and we'll start stapling the bottom of the frame. We'll do both sides. Next we'll cut our siding pieces at 15 inches and we'll start to make our way all the way around the enclosure. We'll simply overlap, draw a line and use our angle grinder to cut. So I put the pieces up and then I overlap the next piece. I'll put the piece up first and then I'll back the screws out and then slide the next piece behind it. You'll see right here. That's my little maneuver. It just keeps everything straight. So I must have double tapped the record button, but right after this, I install four three inch door hinges on the top. So now I put the top pieces on, I overlap, and I let it overhang about an inch and a half on each side. I make my way around the top with the screws, and then I installed an 18 inch braided line on the very end of the door to hold it up for me. Okay, so we're gonna attach some tires, some wheels, to this rabbit run. That way we can move it around the yard. This has treated two by fours on it, which are heavier than the regular boards. So we're gonna add wheels. Now tires and wheels, they're expensive. And I've searched the internet trying to find a good one. Your best deal, go to Tractor Supply Company. TSC, you can buy these tires with the wheel for $15. It's a tough air pressured wheel. It's strong enough and big enough where when you go to actually engage the lift system, it'll actually work. Where some of these wheels, they're smaller, they'll just push into the ground, they're hard, they don't have any traction. So this is the best tire and wheel combination I've found. Okay, so what do we do? So here we have a five inch, half inch bolt. Because we're going through this two by four, this two by four, and this is a ripped two by four. I just ripped a two by four down the middle. So I have one on this end, one on that end. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill uh, a hole a couple inches from the end. Now it's best to do this before you put the, the cage wire on. There's a five inch bolt to hold on to the tire. We're gonna use our six inch bolt. So I already used a half inch drill bit to drill out the hole. So we're gonna put three washers on this bolt. That way it has enough space where when we're operating it, the bolt end doesn't catch on the cage wire. So that'll space that out enough. Okay, so now we're gonna put the tire on. We're gonna put a washer on this end, tire on, washer. This on. Okay, washer and where's the nut? Okay, 
Okay. And then we'll tighten this down a little bit. You really want it too tight. You want the tire to move. So you're gonna need to drill one four inch bolt about two and a half inches away from the two by four. This just gives you a lot of room for your hand. I used a four inch bolt and this is only a quarter inch. I mean, I, I probably could have went up to three eighths. I put it right in the middle of that two by four and that gave me enough room where this can go underneath it. And that's how we lift it, okay? Now we'll push up on the other end. Okay. I cut two 12 inch two by twos. I piloted the holes, I drilled them to the frame. I had to cut the cage wire, but I sanded them down so the handles are smooth. So this is a great rabbit tractor. You know, some things I might do differently, I would use a different handle. I have a handle right here, so when I set it down, but it's not very big. I probably could have went with a bigger handle. When I started with the bolts, I started with uh, 3 8 It seemed to, to bend right away, so I upped to half inch bolts, and that fixed the problem. You know, you can feed your rabbits pellet for a couple months and move them out onto these tractors, maybe throw in some hay and some branches, but they're gonna be able to feed themselves off this, this grass. This grass is something you wanna introduce gradually on their way to eight weeks, especially feed mama before they're born. By three weeks, these rabbits have eaten cecotropes that the mama has produced, which has given them the bacteria in their stomach so they can have the healthy gut. They're gonna jump out at three weeks and start eating pellet, water, greens, hay, be sure to feed them gradually and by eight weeks they're ready to go and you can feed them for the remainder we like to process right around 10 11 weeks some of the best meat you'll ever eat